Oh, hey guys. Well, you know how it goes, man. Bleeding edge stuff here. So what we're trying to do now is make some last minute adjustments here. And welcome. I don't see anybody on here. I'll start up the other one over here and just see what happens in a minute. We're gonna get this right one way or another. Welcome, welcome to the Wakanda Fly session. And I'm glad you're here. It is a nice cold night. I'm gonna turn the heat off actually so we can have some silence here. Welcome to the fly tying bench. We're gonna tie the Wakanda fly tonight. It's really actually a clouser, but the thing is, is it's all black. So that's what makes it interesting. And in the South, when we tie these flies, I'm just checking video over here because I'm trying to do two things at once. There's one one person on here. Say something, will you? If you're there, just maybe a text will pop up, I would hope, or something like that. And we'll see what we can do. I uh, sent people from one to the other. It's a little bit early still. Um, if, oh, there's two people now. So maybe we're going to get some people here. That'd be awesome. Again, we're just kind of rolling into this. This is ah, straight up 10 o'clock now, three people on. Thanks for tuning in. And I was just kind of warming up a second ago, trying to get the camera set and all that. We're trying to get this thing to focus properly. and It's not doing it very well. Let's take a look, see if it will. I don't know, this is just really tough. I'm tired of being on the bleeding edge, people. But um, let's see here. Will it take it, will it not? It had it earlier in focus, and now, howdy. Hey, man, how's it going, HD, Nair B, <laughs> whatever that means. So, this will be a little bit out of focus, but I can talk our way through it. Uh, I guess that the camera, oh, I know what I might be able to do. The camera might be able to, no, it doesn't look like it's going to focus where I want it to, which is kind of sucks, really. But, Conda Fly which is just another another name. It's a Wakanda Clouser. It's all black. In the south, the water is so uh, unclear so much of the time that I'm going to shut this down over here because it looks like nobody's over here, which is just freaking awesome. Uh, most of the time, we're dealing with water is not real clear. So an impressionistic fly over the years, I've gone back to this black on black whenever nothing's working. And the black on black clouser is what it is. So it's solid black clouser. And what I do is I, I like to tie either on a, on a regular jig hook or a circle jig hook. This is the uh, Eagle Claw 410S, I think it is. It comes from a place called Lure Parts Online. And I like it so much. Where's that bag I've got? I like these hooks so much that... Um, I buy them 500 at a time. So that's a really good hook. Boy, the exposure looks awful here. Let me see if I can tune this down just a little bit. So I buy these hooks 500 at a time. Uh, I use them, I probably go through this many and it was pro probably last me a couple of years. But um, they're really great hooks because if you happen to take a strike on um, a time when you're not stripping, when you, when you pause and then that this will hook the fish and it won't it, he'll hook himself so it's it's great hook circle hooks are awesome um they don't do as much damage there's no and in the long run that you, you know they don't swallow these hooks they come out and then they hook on the lip they're great hooks i use them there's not very apparently they're not very popular to anybody but me because <clears throat> because they're not making as many anymore but they are made in stainless steel by mustad i use those Kind of a little bit not a lot and um so they're really good hooks questions that's a size that's a size four size four <sighs> all right so the way you start anything is with a good thread base my thread is the 210 flat wax it's a heavy, very strong, and you won't break it while you're tying. Because wh what I do with my, I, I just put it on these flies and tie them down as tight as I can to make them last. 
But so we're gonna take a base, go to the front where the bend starts and put a little nub there. That'll keep your, your uh, thread from running off the end of that and running up to the eye of the hook. If it does run up there, it's really not a problem. It's not gonna make any difference. Take your thread all the way back, you know, three about three runs back to where the hook, parallel to the hook right there. So that's where it stops right there. Just because you don't really have to go that far. I like to go that far just in case I get all whacked out on where I place my eyes because eye placement is fairly important. And you remember that the jig hook besides this is there are jig hooks that aren't circle hooks um that they create what 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 trend the trendy name for it now is they create a, a uh golly i got scissors here somewhere man what a mess i mean time flies for florida so it's just a wreck around here what they do is uh they do what's called i don't know even it's called even i think and essentially that means that there's not that up and down jigging action as much because it, it's going, staying in the same water column and it's, the movement's like this instead of like this. So it, it's, it's just a different thing that actually keeps um, your fly in the strike zone longer. It doesn't just dip out of the strike zone. Um, that I like. I can pause or I can I can slow it down. I can let it sink before I strip and do other things to change the water column. But once you get it into that water column, it's not coming up out of it and back into it within the strike zone. When I say water column, you can say strike zone and mean the same thing. So that's, that's what I think about that. Um, now that we got a good thread base, always put in a little bitty bump right there. The reason you want to bump is because that's like the like a saddle for your for your eyes and as you tighten those eyes down it, they'll sink into that saddle and they'll tend to seat it's like a seat for the for the actual eye and what it does is just keeps it keeps it in there strong and I'm, i go back you'll see in a second with my um it's a loon now a uv activated uh, hardener Go back with my loon go in here and and set the eyes before i go any further if if you tie a clouser the right way even on a straight hook not a jig hook it'll run with the hook up this is the key uh, to this one of the keys to the fly is the fact that it runs with the hook point up and that my friends keeps you from getting caught in all this brush and stuff we tend to fish for bass and sometimes sand bass when they're when they're in the creeks and stuff like that which we're headed towards that time right now uh you wouldn't believe it today we had a, a dust storm here in north texas that preceded a front we had 50 mile an hour gusts here at my house and um, the dust was like amazing amount of dust so it, it's been a real interesting weather phenomenon this winter is finally wrapping up You can feel it. It's almost over. But anyway, okay. So you got your thread base on here. You're in here good. If, uh, some people like to ask all the minor detail. This is a Dynaking uh, vice. Some friend of mine who ties a lot calls it a steampunk vice. It's very industrial, very big, and very heavy. Um, I've tied probably 10,000 flies on it so far. I had it, I don't know how long, a few years six or seven or eight years and it's been great for me vices are starting to evolve a little bit and i saw a peak it was really interesting to me but it was for tying bigger flies than what i usually tie I, I like to have that peak just to tie the big stuff like for florida but again that's money so the eyes the eyes have it this is an eye by let's see if i can get that real close you see it just doesn't focus that close it's really disappointing to me mm, see it just doesn't work but anyway this is an allen fly fishing uh near warehouses here nearby like 20 miles away uh, allen fly fishing barbell it's a brass with nickel plate on it they're, they used to be really reasonable and now they're not as reasonable but still they're um the best eyes you can get when it comes to why this black on black works so well, 
maybe you know i don't i just besides the fact that it's an impressionistic fly that, that fish looking up will see silhouetted against against the, a brighter background maybe it's because of the contrast i use i use the the basically the chrome or whatever you want, nickel and I also use a very bright flash and so maybe those things contrast it's all theory i'm not a fish i don't know why it works so well but it does so now we're going to lay the eyes in here really just find, kind of rotate till you find that, that that and you can put as much pressure as you physically think you could ever muster on this but let me show you you got to you got to take those the the crossovers and vary them up and the winning combination that locks it all in i've discovered which is not a discovery i didn't invent this i didn't invent any of this is you go around like this and then you take that saddle and you clinch it like this right here and what that does is oops i don't even need to do that go back forward to right for the eye i don't really need to glue it i just glue it because i like the glue and it doesn't smell that's not why i like the glue i just like it so here we go going around upside down i don't use i don't rotate the vise on a simple fly like this to tie fast or anything i'm not in a hurry this is therapy drop a drop right there just a little bit that's all you need a bottle of this uh, loon clear finish flow last um a lifetime it lasts a really long time good stuff good company they take good care of me now if i can find my light all right close your eyes bada bing so this this light is the uv it takes about that long it's done okay so this is this is the top of the fly we're going to put the belly of the fly it's a basic clouder in first we're gonna this is a very difficult thing to find this is a bucktail in black sometimes they run out oh it stinks too god dang that stinks uh, sometimes uh, you can find them but they're very coarse because I think the black dye does does a number on the hair and so and that stinks it does a number on the hair and so you don't and people like some people like coarse and some people like straight fine Remember that only about this much of the tail from here up, from here up, is usable and they're for clousers. And the reason is that as you go further down in the tail, down here, there's more air in the in the shaft of the hair. And it will you can take that and you can you could spin it if you wanted to make make a top water poppers or whatever. But really, you're only dealing with about this much up. So when you go to the store and you're looking for a good bucktail, take them out of the bag and squeeze them. Squeeze them like that and spread them out. And go ahead and act like you're, I mean, just take, they don't care if you take out that. And do this right here. Just take take it like that and and let, basically, let the guy know that you're, you're, <laughs> you're serious about your fly tying material. This stuff's not cheap anymore especially bucktails if everybody's gotten in line with the price that one is about done so let me grab another one i've got a whole barrel of them over here in different colors but i have more black than any other color and tying this fly is the reason why well here's another one that's even straighter hair right there so let me try that one instead see if i can find something reasonable on it i can hardly see i had to adjust the lights just so i could make this whole little funky thing work that's still not a very good one so sometimes i'm a little bit of a pack rat when it comes to bucktails and this is one of those times it's just not very good ones left all right let's try that right there so another thing you want is you want these kind of scissors heavy scissors for cutting bucktail and stuff like that the reason is that the uh lighter weight scissors used for cutting thread see how you do that one Ooh, that was easy for cutting thread are not as good for cutting this kind of stuff so what i do here i'm going to take it like that this has still got a lot of air in this shaft but we'll get we'll get through this as good as we can i could show you how we can get through this 
And what you can do, you got to get the short hairs out of there if you can. There's how you do it right there. Just take that, dump those out like that, and you're in good shape. Now, if you if you've made this end uneven, you need to even it up. When you come in with this, you come in right like this. Oh, it's gonna be tough with an angle. Make sure your vice is tightened down. Come in at an angle like that. I can barely see what I'm doing. It's so dark in here. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat sometimes goes out on me. All right, so that's secured in the front. You go behind, you loosen up with your left hand. It's my left hand right here. I'm gonna loosen up with that so that the the actual hair is allowed to be pulled down right behind the eyes, really snug. And then you come back here and not too snug because this, this one has a lot of air in it. So we're gonna go really loose right here for the girdle. I'll call it a girl, and then it'll, it'll just hold it just like, you don't want it to flare like real wide into a triangle. That's what you want right there. So there, we're back. Go back to the front. There's your belly, it's in. All right. Yeah, let me get a little, a little refreshment here and see if, see if my throat will clear. That's better. All right, this is called Hollow Flash Silver. It's so bright that it won't even show on the camera. There we go, put it back here. That's what it looks like, the silver. You wanna cut this in about, oh, anywhere from, you gotta have vari variation in, in your flies, anywhere from as few as three to as many as 10 strands so you take your strands you cut them off with room to spare the reason you do that is because in these flies you're not going to get short strikes so you want to go ahead take that lay it on top just like that take this hand and, and hold it just like that we're going to go around and take a loose wrap because with a loose wrap we can still pull those back just a little bit further now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and reposition a couple of those proportionally as much as possible so there, there's some on either side of the fly. We don't know where that big ass bass is gonna be coming from, so we're gonna take it like that. Now I left some ends out here. Let's take those off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie a few of these tonight so we can hang out. Oh, this is a hangout, okay. And we can uh, see if uh, I get any better at this. Goodness gracious, I hope I do. There we go, there's that. Thread is cheap, so add your thread just like this. Like, de, de, de. It might go off the end. Yeah, it went off the end just a little bit. Now, waxed has a tendency to slide off the end, but we're done with the bottom part of the fly. We're done with the midsection of the fly. The next thing you need is this right here. They hide these now at a lot of fly shops because they consider it politically incorrect. This is a kip tail, kip tail, it was a calf tail, so I don't know what they do with the calves. I guess they, I don't know, I don't know. They slaughter them somehow for some reason. And, and then this is their tail, and it's just dried and hard as a rock, so the bone's still in there or whatever. Who cares? I don't care. It's dead. It's gone. So anyway, you just get you about that much off of there. That's like that. This is what you want. Just enough. That's probably too much. Remember... It's better to have not enough materials on there than too much and make a fly too solid. You want it to have an impressionistic feeling to where a fish, you know, you'd rather him see through it than not be able to see past it. And that'll give you a better, your odds get better. So you take this and you're gonna just pull off those extras. You can feel those just like we did on the bucktail. What we thumped the bucktail, we're gonna take this I think it's a little bit long still. We're gonna shorten it up some. It has to be shorter than the belly. So it comes up just like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see, I can kind of see it. Yeah, there we go. So it's gonna come up a lot shorter. It's about one half the length at, at reasonably one half the length. It could be as little as one third the length. It'd still be great. This is where it gets interesting because we got a lot of stuff going on up front. We're still sliding off the front of this hook a little bit, but it's black on black. So you've got a you've got the Wakanda clouser almost done. 
it's a fantastically effective fly for bass in the south, like South Mesa Dixon. So gonna go here, simple, simple stuff. Finish with your whip finisher like this right here. Ding, 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 the ding, ding, ding. The wax has a tendency to really bite down when you're doing that. It's really great. The wax on the thread. There we go, there's Wakanda fly number one right there. So let's take this. We're gonna harden this up. My flies, I make them to last. If you buy my flies, you're gonna have flies that you can't wear out. You'll lose them on a snag or you lose them in a tree, but you won't wear them out anytime soon. Uh, fish will wear them out. That is one thing that they can do with these, the hair on this, they can bite through it and you'll have frayed hair at the end of a long day of this kind of fishing. So that's about the only way these flies ever, ever, ever go away is by hard, hard biting from fish. Back to my light again. Dang, this is fun. This is just too fun. We're gonna do it again. Okay. Cool, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Ooh. Anyway pretty fun and you'll see the color change you really you know it, it's slightly reflective you shouldn't be looking at this stuff um, and use a use your sunglasses that's what I usually use but I can't see it so dark in here use your sunglasses when you're using that light and if you're young you'll live long and outlive your eyes or your eyes will outlive you. There's one right there. So that was a slow, slow tie. It runs hook up like this. You can see the jig. Maybe you can see that. I mean, not the jig. You can see the, the circle part of that. That's a five. No, it's a 4.0 weight on the uh, eye. Even if it was a next size smaller, it's going to turn because it's a jig. So many, many positive things about jig hooks one of them is it gives you a a margin for error because um if you happen to get your weighting wrong weighting the weight wrong uh, if you went too light on the eyes and the uh, the jig will let will correct for that just because it's running up um the other thing you know you want to think about is is tying these with because you because the jig hook makes up for it use different weight eyes so you, the next weight down on the allen fly fishing i think is a 4.4 go down to the 4.4 I, I think i'm out of those i think i use so many this is or this is a 4.4 the next one down is four numbers man i'm not a math guy i'm a photographer so anyway you go down and then when you go down you will um be able to have different columns of the water, different strike zones because of the weight of the fly. Remember also that if you're fishing with a monofilament leader, you're going to be, no matter what, it's going to be shallower, even the same pound tests, shallower than if you're using fluoro. I switched to, I mean, once I discovered fluoro and started tying my own leaders, that's all I do. I haven't bought I'll buy some leaders for going to Florida next month. Some some tapered leaders just to be fancy and make people think I'm fancy. But otherwise, you don't need um, floral leaders. You just tie. And if you contact me, I will send you a formulas for tying your own leaders, knotted leaders. And then you just go buy your own fluorocarbon, solid, solid fluorocarbon, not coated or any of this 100% coated. I've seen they're, they're starting to use these terms that are that are deceptive for their fluorocarbon now. You don't want coated. You want solid fluoro. Let's do another one real quick. I'm looking for comments or questions. I got a grand total of two people on here, and I can I can see you, but I don't think I can respond. So you're just gonna have to talk to me, and then maybe it'll register later, and I can get back to you on this stuff. If you're afraid to talk to me, I understand. I've been afraid to talk to people for a long time, but not anymore. I want you guys to be able to get out, catch the fish you want to catch, 
where you want to catch them. And if you guys have any questions, you got to let me know. I'm not magical and I can't read your minds. So just like before, we went all the way back to even with the hook and we went forward. I didn't put much of a nub on the front. I'm going to go up there and put a little nub so maybe my, my uh, thread won't go off the end like it did on the last one. If it does, it does not make any difference. You just go ahead and finish this part. I need... You need to just if it does go off the end, that's fine. Just let just wind your thread on and tightly down here and let that be part of the fly design. It's magical. So do that. Okay. I'm gonna have to look up the size on this um in a minute before we go, just so you guys will know exactly what um size eyes these are. But if you go to allenflyfishing.com Go to their, their barbell, I, it's the eye section, then go to their, their barbells or whatever they, you know, call them. I think that's what they call them. You're going to want to buy the, the five point, wow, what is that? It's driving me nuts now, I got to tell you. <clears throat> this is the 4.8. So, I mean, there's so many different sizes. So, I'm tying with a 4.8. The next one up, let's see here, is... bigger <laughs> I don't have the sizes on here the next one down I try to say the little uh, informational thing is four so four and 4.8 and then up from that is 5.5 I know that for sure 5.5 is a monster and it's uh it's so big that um there's 4.8 and there's 5.5 is a monster for like deep diving because um it out uh, that that's actually probably too big for that size hook. It just proportionally is off. But this is a the 5.5, and it's a monster. And it begins to bring back that jigging action I was talking about. It's so heavy. So take that with a grain of salt, but buy the 5.5, the 4.8, and the 4.0. And then there's one down from that if you want to tie smaller flies, which I'm using a lot of small stuff now. I'm tying flies for a bonefish. And for uh, well, man, the light small flies for Florida are the bonefish flies, and they're, they're really they're not that challenging to me. I might do another video if you'd like on the Florida stuff. Don't know how many of you are going to Florida, but um, they remind me a lot of the the flies that I tie for carp, and um, carp flies are more difficult to tie than these flies that I'm working on now by the gazillion for bonefish in Florida. So the thing about going, going to Florida is that there are, um, bonefish permit snook and tarpon. So it's going to be a pretty crowded field there. And I hope they're going to be all be fighting for it for a Texans flies. We'll see. And it's going to be a really interesting trip. Um, don't know what kind of connections or anything like that I'll have there. But if I have good connections, I'll go live from Florida and we will, uh, is that the big one? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it is the big one. Let me take that off. See, you can get that off pretty easy. I'm way off. Let's see here. So, if... I can go live in Florida, I will, and that'll be, I'll be gone theoretically, everything, all God's grace being with me, that will be April 1, and, um, to April like 5 or 6, that should be interesting from my perspective, alright, there's my, accidentally set one of those big ones down, even the 4.4 is pretty big. I just don't, I'm just not, I've got so much going on here with this, this thing that um, finding all my hooks and all my eyes, I've, I've kind of, now that right there, difficult because that is too close to the front of the hook. 
right there. So that's very, very close. So it's gonna be a tough tie, but what we can do is we can go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another button on the front, just a little bitty button of thread right there that should keep it from running off. Remember what we do next, we go upside down like this, and you can still take your fingers and adjust that eye just a little bit. If it's a little bit off one way or another, you just do that before you put the fear of glue on it. And when you do that, uh, and then when you hit it with that light, it's over. It is A over, because that light, <clears throat> setting this uh, loon will lock it in about that many seconds will do back around man that is close okay it's gonna be a tough tie on this i've got i'm really low on the black i've got what i've got is a bunch of scrappy looking black tails left black here's the tail so this one's this one looks fairly good but they remember it's only the top section and there's just not a lot so when you're tying these, roughly one third of a bucktail, it may look good on the bottom end, who cares? The bottom end of a bucktail is not where we cut from for, for, for these clousers. That's pretty good. Clean it off just like that. Get those short hairs out of there. Well, oh boy, I made this tough on myself. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I might make it. Ah, we're going down the just a little bit that's gonna be all right it's not my favorite it doesn't look so good remember to loosen up on this bucktail a little bit let that cinch down like that draw it right to we're just providing the girdle to hold it right there depending on where you cut this off from you might need more or less of a girdle to the front now here let me show you one way you can you can really adjust your life right here you can take this right here and you can kind of horse it down like that and that's what you want you want separation to where you can see that hook shank right there you want to be able to see that you don't want it to go around the side and all that if you do that you're you're hurting your your design and we're, we're here to make pretty flies that are as tough as nails that's what we're all about here we go. This again is flashaboo. It's the it's not the thickest and it's not the thinnest. Well, actually, this it has a number on it, sixty nine ninety one, and it's from Barlow's. Guys, if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, you got to go to Barlow's. I'm telling you, Barlow's is where you want to go. You got to go there. Their prices are they kind of jacked them up a little bit because they were so cheap for so long and they got to make a living just like all of us do. And so they jacked their prices up in the beginning of, well, probably the middle of 2016, 16 going 17. And so it's not as great as it used to be. I mean, they used to be so far behind that their prices were just kind of silly, but now they're getting reasonable to everybody else but that means they'll be in business longer and that means we still need to go there they're local and they're not big box they're not small box but they're not big box so we got these guys i've just got a few here that's only like three strands right there it's gonna be fine if you find that you want more than what you've cut off here's a trick you take it like this go right here like that one two or three then take these others and flip them back like that and now you've got twice as many strands as you would have had if you just cut that off. There we go. All right. Man, that's holding up pretty good. Wax, the waxed is interesting because sometimes it makes a difference and holds everything together. And sometimes it just makes everything slide right off the edge. It's a love-hate relationship with wax. But when you lock it down, it's locked. Locked and loaded. All right. <clears throat> We've done this once before. This will probably be the last one. We're 35 minutes in, which is way too much time for the Wakanda. This is the Wakanda. Kip tail. Magic kip tail has no air in it. You use the whole thing. Kip tails are very functional. They come in a myriad of colors. Uh, black, of course, is where we're at. We're black on black. That's the Wakanda. 
And so let's cut off a little bit of the, of the Kip, Wakanda Kip tail. And this will be the last fly tonight, guys. I got another shot of bullet rye waiting for me over here, and I think I'm going to have it tonight. Sit back and watch Saturday Night Live, what's left of it, and uh, sleep late in the morning. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Very transparent. So look at the look at how little materials I'm using actually so that you can see through you can see through this fly. You don't have to build up fat flies and I suggest actually that you don't. Because what that does, if you build especially if you build up the uh <clears throat> bucktails as it creates buoyancy, and so the fly will tend to be more buoyant. And if it's buoyant on the bottom, it'll try to tilt that hook and it'll stay higher in the column. So it's two double, it's a double negative is what that is. You know what a double negative is? That's bad, bad. So, all right, we're about ready to finish this guy and be done for the night. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and record um, a couple of videos. I call this a Wakanda, it's not tightened down yet. Wakanda fly series and what that means is there's two more at least black on black flies and they are pretty fantastic because they one of them's for trout yeah not saltwater trout little baby trout factory trout and the other is uh I don't know what it is but I know I've got at least two more black on oh it's the it's the seducer Great, great fly. You tie it black on black. Put a rattle eye on it. Ooh, rattle eyes are awesome. All right. I've got so much material on here now that I am climbing up. I'm just going to go right up there. Look at there. And that just doesn't even make a difference to anybody but me. So that fly is not nearly as beautiful as the first one. But hey, everybody's got their days. All right, go around. Whip finisher is not that tricky, really. You take it, hook it right there. Go around that little little curvature in the back. You come over here. Oops. You come over here like this. Go like that. You catch the catch your thread right there. And catch that in the loop. Three, four is all you need. Five has one to grow on. Like that. All right. You can see that this fly can be tied so quickly. You could tie it. I'm slow. I don't know why, I guess my, my comprehension isn't that good, but uh, you could tie these so quickly, you could easily do a dozen in an hour. You cannot buy a black on black Wakanda Clouser at the store. If you somebody carries them, let me know. I'll quit tying them. That's how, how confident I am that you cannot find it at the store. Uh, the key to tying your own flies is you get to tie what you want what you can't find anywhere else. And that's the key to life, isn't it? I mean, really, what you want to do in life is you want to do what other people can't do. Where did you do with my light? Oh, here it is, right here. This table's a mess. I'm glad you can't see it. It's a total train wreck. Here we go, round and round. Another great reason to have a rotating vise. Uh, even uh, if you don't buy the most expensive or whatever, rotating, I went from that uh, from a regular standard vise to rotating vise in a matter of two months because it's driving me nuts. You'd have to take it out of the jaws and flip it over to, to rotate it. And I was tying way too many flies right off the right out of the, right at the start. I was tying so many flies that I had to have a rotator. I went for Griffin, Griffin rotating, and then I went bit the bullet for the Dyna King, and I I made my money back on that and then some. Okay. There we go, Wakanda fly number two with narration. Hope you enjoyed it. Guys, you gotta get out and fish. Call me if you need to. My number is 940-380-0408. And ask any questions, text me if you want, send me photos and I'll put them on the feed. Thanks for watching. And as always, go to www.texasflycaster.com and aren't you glad I'm such a nice guy? We'll talk to you later. Bye.